Hi right, guys, welcome back to S Chamberlain 5150's YouTube channel. Sunday down at the shop, we got so many projects that we gotta knock out before Daytona. We got Xavier over here working on the, the giveaway bike. Got it as a rolling chassis, front wheel, he's working on brakes, getting everything set up, everything prepped to be wired. Um, then we got the skinny bagger, that's up on the lift. Got a race tech front suspension, everything. Mark's gonna be knocking out that today. Um, I told you before about the geezer glide trees. So we're gonna get those on there with uh, the 49 millimeter conversion. And these, we got these uh, prototype uh, LED fog lights for uh, the cowbells on it. Um, we got some LA choppers bars, um, some nice uh, good and tight risers, uh, riser bushings. My machinist got them with the, the power vision mount and then the gauge mount. So gonna take out the radio. This replaces it. Take these gauges from right here, boom, have T-bars. And then we're going with a, a 14 inch racing bro shock. A couple of this. We're, the whole thing about this is like, we're keeping on a budget, like super budget. So a uh, little bit cheaper parts, but gonna try to knock out the front end and that my wheels are at powder coat i should really get this bike built because we're supposed to show it off in daytona march 7th destination daytona skinny bagger skinny tire bagger build off stbbl um so yeah we're gonna get rocking see what we get done today and everything so cool Like a sea of all these suspension upgrades we've been doing on these performance baggers and everything. Everybody's doing cartridges. Nothing wrong with cartridge. They're actually pretty uh, pretty good. But on this, with keeping it cheaper, we're gonna do a race tech front end. Um, we got Mark, owner of uh, Texas Performance. He's gonna kind of tell you how a race tech works um, as far as like what you do and how the valving and everything. So uh, a race tech gold valve is designed to emulate what a cartridge front end does on a shock dyno. So the way we accomplish that here is we have to drill the dampener rod out to overflow your compression. Um, the lower holes are always your compression holes, the upper holes are always your rebound. Rebound hole, you don't wanna to touch unless you really, really know what you're doing, but the second you mess it up, you gotta buy a new one. So we over drill your compression holes so that all your compression fluid is controlled by this gold valve. And the way we control that is a couple different ways. Spring tension, so there's two different springs. We have, you know, typically a light spring and a heavy spring. Uh, I forget which one is which, I'd have to look it up. But the two springs and then the spring tension on there, as well as with the viscosity of the oil. So depending on what you're trying to accomplish with the front end depends on how you want to adjust it. So. If you need your rebound and your compression both to be a little bit slower, then a thicker viscosity oil can accomplish both in one goal. But if you're happy with your rebound and you need a little more compression, a slower compression, then you would need to pull the gold valve and adjust it. And vice versa, if you're happy with your compression, but you need a little more rebound, you're gonna have to pull the gold valve, adjust it looser, and then put a thicker viscosity oil in it. So it's not quite as simple as tuning a cartridge front end, uh, which is what's nice about cartridges or inverteds, but it is completely tunable. It just might take a little more time and a little more detail work, so. Awesome, so he's gonna get that together, and then we're gonna work on getting some trees, everything taken off, so when that's together, we can bolt that up on the bike. Mark, Mark's just working way too quick today. I kind of missed him uh, drilling and cleaning and all that stuff. But definitely 
with suspension, you want to clean everything up the best you can. You know, you know, like a tiny little, I showed you those little rebound orifice holes. They were so minuscule. So any dirt or metal shavings or anything like clean, clean, clean. But Mark's going to kind of show you how he's setting up the race tech in this front end and everything right here. So we, uh, first thing we did is obviously we cleaned the fork lowers. They had been powder coated. They're still a little oily right now from initial assembly, but you know, you want to make sure that you don't have powder coating like where your caliper mounts, that's a precision surface. You don't want it on the inside of where the axle goes, places like that. Same thing on the other side where the spacer bolts to the inside of the fork because this sets the depth of your rotors into your calipers. And so if there's powder coating here, it can actually shove your wheel over and you won't have centered uh, calipers in your uh, rotors and stuff. <clears throat> but, you know, what we did basically is we assemble everything and then we mock it together so we run the adapter on the gold valve spring and then we put two washers in here to simulate one on either side and then we set our preload um, for this we're just setting it at uh, one inch of preload right now so basically all i did is measured the cap added what i needed to to make it one inch and then um, cut it above the fork at that point but the nice thing about these race tech kits is that these springs are available on all different uh, spring rates so you can kind of tailor it to you. So if you have a, if you're a bigger guy on a lighter bike, you need a different spring rate than if you're a light guy on a big bike and everything else. So they have a bunch of different spring rates. Uh, you can go to racetech.com and enter in your information, the bike, your riding style, all that sort of stuff. And they'll give you a roundabout and they don't come in like every single size, but they come in increments of a couple, like I think it's 0 0.05 uh, kilograms per millimeter, different increments and stuff. But the gold valve kit, you know, this is the actual part that creates a you know um, a dyno a shock dyno that emulates what a cartridge does and so when we set these up these are the springs that we were talking about so they come with the blue springs the the yellow some of them come with silvers which is a super light size so we went ahead and threw the yellow springs on here for steve because i'm fat well and because <laughs> we might be coming down hard from wheelies and stuff like that you know and so we won't, don't want it to just bottom out as soon as as soon as you land but this spring you know when you set your you set zero lash we set these up right now with three turns past zero lash we'll kind of feel it out again there's no like exact science this is all a feel it kind of try and describe what you're feeling and then we go back in and we can modify it um to fit exactly what you want but this spring pressurizes your compression holes right here so this is your standard compression and then once the pressure builds up enough to force the spring up this opens and the orifice gets much larger. So it allows it to, you know, compress faster. So this will slow the initial compression before it hits that fast compression point, so. Nice. So we'll get these rest of the way together. i am uh, got the front end tore down and everything, uh, kind of the front end tore down. I got everything fairing off. I'm going through the wiring. Since we're putting the gauges up where the radio mounts, I got this. I just took off all the wiring. I'm gonna go through it and eliminate some stuff and reroute and get everything. We're gonna get these forks out of here and then we're gonna get the 49 millimeter geezer glide conversion trees on there. So yeah, buddy. So we got the fork lock in, installed, um, had a flat net, just kind of went by their instructions that they queued up. Um, you gotta take away a little material right here, just because when, you know, it's easier to see the top trees on it, but when the fork goes, the actual tube just being a larger diameter, you gotta make sure that, but just refer to their instructions for these geezer glide trees. He's got all the instructions on geezerglide.com and everything. So just getting this all clearanced up, then got his, uh, the Geezer Glide cowbells mounted up. He's, uh, these are still like a prototype, but these have the fog lights in them. Then he's also doing ones with fog lights and turn signals. So pretty sweet stuff.
All right, guys, so we got this basically mocked up. My wheels are supposed to be back pretty soon. Um, got the LA choppers bars on here, getting measured for cables. My machinist um, power vision mount that goes to the T-bars. He's got a T-bar mount. Um, we're gonna do the gauge relocation up there. Uh, the geezer glide trees are all in. Brake lines, we'll get the calipers and all that. And then we got this clockworks level fender. Um, I think I'm gonna chop the back. You know, this one kind of wraps around. I'm um, gonna think I'm gonna go about along this line. You know, obviously I'm gonna round the corner a bit. Kind of play with it once the wheel's on there. Um, then these are from Geezer Glide with the, uh, they're kind of prototypes right now. So he's having these where they have these lights in them and then also with the external or turn signal up in it and everything. But I think this bike is gonna come out turning pretty sweet. So, if you guys like it, like, comment, subscribe. We're going to keep working on the skinny tire bagger. Like I said earlier in the video, uh, Daytona, March 7th, Destination Daytona, Hardcore Cycles Performance Show. We're going to be unveiling these, me and a couple other companies and or people and normal people, companies, all of them. So, come check it out if you're down in Daytona and uh, let's keep having a good time. Thanks.